for those who are just joining us, we're talking with Lawrence Goldstone about the book which he co-authored with Vernona Gomez, the daughter of one of baseball's best pitchers and most charismatic and unique figures, Lefty Gomez, a new book called Lefty, an American Odyssey. Let's talk a moment about the career of, of Lefty Gomez, and then we'll take apart a couple of very interesting chapters in, in his really interesting life. In the prologue to the book, this is said, and it is so intriguing. Lefty Gomez is both one of the best known and one of the least known stars in baseball history. How can that possibly be true? Lefty was one of the preeminent pitchers in baseball. He's remembered for his one-liners, which is, I'd rather be lucky than good. Uh, the secret of my success is clean living in a fast outfield. He once said about Jimmy Fox, which is my all-time favorite line, he had muscles in his hair. <laughs> he was an amazing wit. He, he reminded me of a long-forgotten sports writer named Ring Lardner, who was just exceptionally funny, exceptionally insightful. So we, we remember his one-liners, but what is forgotten is that he was one of the most extraordinary pitchers in baseball history and one of the most extraordinary big game pitchers in baseball history that he was the winner of the first all-star game drove in the first run in the first all-star game was had a world series record of six and zero, and was the was the man joe mccarthy called on when they needed a big game after baseball lefty was the first major league star to manage a mixed race team which he did in venezuela he started baseball in venezuela he was instrumental in, be in making baseball popular in Cuba. And then in the late 1940s, he got a job with Wilson Sporting Goods and became one of the most well-known ambassadors for the game. The first chapter is called The Cowboy's Son. And wow, it is such an interesting family into which Vernon Gomez is born. Tell us a little bit about these early years of Vernon Gomez and the large family into which he was born. Lefty was raised in Rodeo, California, which at the time was a kind of John Steinbeck-esque dusty backwater. He was the youngest of eight children, one of whom died shortly after birth, so the youngest of seven. And his mother started a dairy, worked morning till night, did everything, did her own jams, grew her own food. And her father, his father, excuse me, was a genuine cowboy, rode the range as a kid, you know, driving herds, and worked Monday through Friday, not at home, but out in a little log cabin with no water or electricity. Lefty said, we were never poor, we just didn't have any money. They were very much the American dream in transition. But Lefty, who his father very much wanted to go to college and also be an engineer, simply was determined to become a baseball pitcher. Hmm. And he grew to be six foot two and a half, and he weighed about 140 pounds, which, you know, kind of like a walking corn stalk. So they looked at him and they said, well, this guy's never going to pitch. He can't gain any weight. And he ended up having a 100-mile-an-hour fastball, which people to this day still can't figure out how he could generate so much power with so little weight. Hmm. So it was, it was also, Greg, my favorite part of the book to write because, you know, I said the town was like John Steinbeck. Well, Lefty was like a Mark Twain character. So you have Huck Finn running around here and just watching this boyhood, this, this kind of boyhood that someone like Mark Twain or Booth Tarkington would have written about was utterly fascinating. To me. Absolutely. And of course, one of the interesting dynamics which you've already touched on is his father Coyote's intense resistance to this notion, this outlandish dream of his young son. You write at one point, as the years went by, the more immersed Vernon became in the game, the more resistant Coyote became to his becoming a ball player. Coyote was pure gristle, but his son matched him. I think one of the neatest things about this little chapter is that uh, on a lot of these weekend trips that he made playing semi-pro ball, his companion and sometimes his training partner was his older yeah. sister Gladys. I mean, that's straight out of a Hollywood script. And what's even more out of a Hollywood script was, according to Lefty, Gladys was a better ball player than he was. <laughs> she was, and what did he say? She was as mean as a hog on ice. You know, they, they traveled together sometimes... 300 miles 
on a weekend on a bus with broken springs in the seats trying to do their schoolwork on the bus so Lefty could play semi-pro ball. This, another thing that really fascinated me about this project was that Lefty's history is kind of baseball's history. He grew up at a time when baseball was growing up and America was growing up. And the way he broke into the game, these semi-pro games, these leagues, these different teams and the rosters would change and they were kids and they were older people. And this was the kind of thing that we understand was the, was the formation of baseball, but you never get a chance to actually read about it, read about someone who did it. So I got a chance to read about the history of baseball through the experiences of this remarkable kid. And he was a kid. Lefty was pitching competitively when he was 12 years old. And by the time he was 14, or he, when he pitched against Satchel Paige, he was 15. Hmm. And, of course, uh, it's, it's very moving to read about, um, for instance, some of the part-time jobs which... Uh, which young lefty took uh-huh. to try to finance his his career. I mean that moment when he had to get enough money to buy a glove in order to sign on with this semi pro team, and 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 it it's it's just amazing uh, the way in which he had to show incredible determination to make this dream come true. When he eventually does climb the ladder and <laughs> finally gets in the front door of the New York Yankees. Uh-huh. Uh, somebody there, uh, one of his fellow rookies, says, we couldn't believe what we were seeing, a skeleton firing bullets. <laughs> right. I guess one of the things that is really striking about Lefty Gomez is that uh, this young man from dusty California is able to cross the country to New York City, huh. to this glamorous big city, and to the big time, and not be undone, not be unduly distracted, uh, or, or unduly intimidated. I mean, somehow he settled into this and um, showed remarkable steadiness and consistency, uh, all things considered. Uh, tell us a little more about the role that he played, his evolving role on this legendary New York Yankees team. Young Vernon Gomez, you would never have suspected that he would become such a pivotal player in the clubhouse. But what he had in addition to insight, he was highly intelligent. And once he got to New York, he he was so gregarious and he was so likable that Babe Ruth adopted him instantly. He left, he became one of Babe's closest friends. In fact, they all took to him. He had a high moral code. He had the, he was kind of, it was kind of the code of the West. As gregarious as he was and his, and as affable as he was, he also never spoke out of school. He never divulged a secret. He was, the, he was the perfect teammate and became the glue of that locker room. When Lou Gehrig took himself out of the game in 1939, his roommate, Lou's roommate, was Bill Dickey, who had been his roommate for eight years and was probably his closest friend on earth. And Dickey couldn't bring himself. He didn't know what to do. He was, he, he was so distraught that he just sat frozen in the dugout. And it took Lefty. Nobody moved. And Lou was sitting there, and it was a, this, this poignant moment. And finally, Lefty was the one. He walked over, and he sat next to Gehrig, and he said, Lou, it took them 15 years to get you out of the lineup. Sometimes I'm out of a game in 15 minutes. And everyone laughed, including Gehrig, and the tension was broken. Mm. And that's the kind of thing he was able to do because of this remarkable ability with people that was so rare and got him to the point where he was probably the most important figure in the Yankee clubhouse in the 1930s. Hmm. The book, once again, is titled Lefty, an American Odyssey, the life and career of the very gifted, charismatic Lefty Gomez, uh, co-authored by his, uh, his oldest daughter, Vernona, and Lawrence Goldstone, my guest. And the book is published by Ballantine Books.